grew up on this plantation from 54 to about 62, 63, we moved off. But making the toys, it was something I started doing at five years old. I was taught to me by my older brother. Older brothers taught it to him. Uncles taught it to them. It was something brought down from Africa. This was only done in southern part of Nagadish Parish. I have brother-in-laws and cousins who grew up north of this bridge who never heard of these toys. We call them plantation toys. They never made them. They never heard of them. But from Bermuda Bridge to Cloucheville, the kids made them. It was a twisted wire toys. We used baling wire and neo wire to allow us to twist them by hand without any support. I made those from about five years old up until about 15 years old. But when I retired in 2011, I would talk to children down here about making the toys, and most of the kids didn't believe me, simply because who ever heard of anybody making their own toys? So I started back to making the toys just to show the kids, and then I got carried away. From 2011, and I would say from 2021, I've made over 400 items. I've given away over 200, donated to libraries and, and museums around the state about 60, sold maybe 100, and I have maybe a handful at home. I will make what I would say historical settings, which I would put it on like a two feet by four feet board, but I will not do ones and twos because I don't try to sell them anymore. That's where we are with these toys now. I'm using a softer and neo wire today. I guess I'll make a small horse. In, in order to make a horse, the first thing you gotta get right is the head. And it's the same thing with making a boy or a girl. You have to get the head right first and, and that kind of thing. And then you go from there with the body. On making a horse, you first start with his mouth area. You will give him the bottom of his mouth area. So now you've decided how big the rest of him gonna be. You say, okay, that's going to be the mouth and the, and the head wise. And then you say, okay, now I got to give him some ears because that's the only distinguishing part on making something like that. So he will bring that up, bring this over, twist it, bring this over, make this ear. So the same making a horse is making a mule, except you give him bigger ears. That's the only difference. So you will bring that over. That the beginning of the years. Because of the big ears. That's more of a mule. We made more mules than anything because mules is the most important thing on the plantation when I was growing up. Horses were like sports cars. What good were they? Mules was a working tool because, yeah, of course, you couldn't afford a tractor. So we used mules. So mules was the thing that we cared for. So I would say that's going to be a mule before I go any further. That's a mule. The only difference is you make them a little smaller and your ears a little smaller. That's the only difference. Now you got to make a true decision about how big is he's going to be. Okay, so now I stop here and I go down. Now I'm going to make the front legs. This is going to be a nice size mule. Okay, so we come down and I make his front legs. <laughs> That's the first leg of the mule. That's how tall he's gonna be. Then we're gonna turn that. Now we make the second leg. The soft anneal wire is crooked. But the easy part about it, you can always kind of straighten it out with your hand. 
Normally I use 16 gauge steel, which is straighter, but then when you get ready to twist it, you gotta use plies. But this is pretty good. There you go. You got a head, the ears, and two legs. Now, we're gonna define where the back end's gonna be. How far are we going to make him? How long he's gonna be? And this is gonna be a nice side view. Okay, now we're gonna make the two back legs. Then I'll come back and I'll give him a belly, I'll give him a tail. Now, the length of the wire that you first cut, that is just something you got to do from experience. There's no way of knowing if you're first doing this, but if you've done it a thousand times, you got an idea how long that first cut has got to be. That turned out pretty good, but it's, no problem, because if it wasn't enough wire, I would stop at whatever point I can stop at and cut some more wire and just tie on. But I like it when it turns out so that I can make the head, two legs in the front, and two legs in the back, and then it's much more easy to come back and do the rest rather than having to do another cutting. If I don't have enough to make that leg fully, I'll turn this into the tail, but I'm not gonna have enough to make that other leg. So I'll move this out of the way. Okay, that's out of the way now. This is gonna become the tail. Now I'll do another cutting. But what I do for art is prime it and paint it. As kids, we didn't do that. We just made it, played with it in the sand, and when we got tired of it, put it aside and walked away. So people who were stumbling over these wire toys all over the place in South Parish, Niagara's Parish, and they was trying to figure out what it was. One of the uh, researchers from University of Houston, he came to me and he said, what was that wire stuff that I kept finding pieces of wire, uh, uh, just little wire ever all over the place? He said, I say that was part of the plantation toys. And then I showed him what we actually made out of it. And he was shocked to realize that, wait a minute, that's what I was finding and just kicking it out of the way. I said, well, you should have put it in a box and saved it because that was historic stuff, man. That put up in some of mine scattered all over the place everywhere. But once we played with it for maybe a week or two, we grew bored with it and we decided to make something else. And, and each time we made it, it was better. You know, because of practice, it was better. The first time I made something, the kids laughed at me, so I threw it away. And, and I said, well, I'm through with this. And then I kept watching them getting better and better. And I say, I can do that. And I went back. And I became very good, but the best person, and he would deny it, was my older brother. He's five years older than me. He was number one. But now he can't do it anymore. He said, I can't do that anymore. He's an electrical contractor. He spent 40 years being an electrical, pulling wire from one building to another. I said, you've been playing with wire your whole life and you can't do it. He said, I can't do that anymore. I told him, I said, what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to make you a tractor. He was the best at making tractors. That was his special. Okay, now that I got to amend my wire selection to finally make the second leg. I still have to deal with this part that I'm going to make the tail out of. Okay, I got the two back legs, two front legs, 
Now I have to finish the skeleton. I got to give him a belly now. If the ears wasn't so big, this could become a cow. <laughs> okay, so let me make part of the neck. some width in his belly because I'm going to wrap him to give him some mass. Now you see I have to give him some more along his back. You see how the skeleton is shaping up now. I'm going to do the same thing with his neck that I'm going to do with the rest of his body to give him some mass, but I'm just gonna show you. I'll start up here. Okay, now you see where I'm going with the back. To fill in, we'll do the same twisted action. You see where that's going? If you think making a mule is complicated, you should see me trying to make a tractor. That gets complicated. Each item you make, you have to make a person to go with it. It's like you make a tractor, you have to give him a driver. So right away, you made, had to make two things. The last thing I got to do on here is define his tail. We have the two strands to make the tail. So here we go. That's your typical mew. Now, I'm going to give him some mane, a little mane. Uh, he won't have as much mane as a horse, but he's going to have some mane. This is your typical plantation toy mule to be played with in the sand until somebody stepped on him and threw him away or you got bored with him and decide to make something different. Never use the wire again. You just, it disappeared into the sand because we had plenty bailing wire to go get. And that is your typical mule. But it was so much fun getting the kids to realize that oh, this, this type thing exists. And that's the only reason why I need to talk about it. I, want, I would like the kids to know that it exists, and it exists here, and it exists around the world in the very poor locations where there are kids with zero dollars who, can uh, who can't afford to have make toys or buy toys.